Good morning, mathematicians. We are looking at our final column of week nine, starting with Thursday. We are looking at trying to find two expressions that are going to be equivalent to this, that are going to give us the same result, the same product. Here we have five times seven over six, or seven six. Here, remember, if you are actually going to solve this, so many times you've seen me do this to show that we would multiply five times seven, right here. And then yes, that fraction bar means divided. So we're gonna divide it by six. So I know that number one is a correct answer. We should circle that one. Now this number two is kind of tricky because at first you might look at this and think, well, I can switch this and switch this and this is in the front. But remember that order matters in division. So we are not going to allow the six to suddenly become our numerator and then have our seven times five be our denominator. This is not true. We cannot circle the second one. Now, when I look at number three, when I look at the third one, this one is true because look, a fraction is a teeny tiny division problem. This fraction means seven divided by six, which I see right here, seven divided by six. And we're going to take five times. So yes. This one is true. We should circle that. The fourth one, we should not circle. This is not true. We are not going to take our five times our denominator. This is not true. All right, our next one says Albert Ernwine forgot how to multiply a mixed number. Help him out. We're going to use some comparison symbols. So, first of all, let's take a look at this. If I have 10 and 1 eighth, times five, I'm first gonna have, I'm gonna combine my five times, and that's gonna give me 50. Then I'm gonna have my five times one eighth. That's gonna be even a little bit more than 50 because that five times one eighth would make it five eighths. So this would actually be 50 and five eighths. So we know very clearly that this value in parentheses is going to be greater. All right, that was for our first one. Now let's go to our second. Our second says five times one fifth. All right, so let's do five times five and one fifth. I think I said that incorrectly. So let's start with our five times five. Five times five is going to give us 24. Now our five times one sixth, or excuse me, our five times one fifth is going to be five times one equals five, and our denominator stays the same. Well, what is a fraction if the numerator and denominator are like five fifths? That equals one whole. So this is gonna be 25 and one more additional whole, it's gonna be 26. So we know here that these are actually equal values. All right, let's go to our third one for this question. We have got nine and seven eighths times four. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my nine times four. I'm going to multiply my whole numbers first. Nine times four is 36. Now I'm going to do my four. Got to take this and got to multiply it by my fraction, right? So I'm going to take my four times seven eighths here. Four times seven is 28. And my denominator stays the same. So my denominator here is eight. Huh, well, let's ask ourselves, let's take this 28 over eight and let's turn that into a mixed number. How many times can eight go into 28? Well, it can go in three times, right? How many are left over? Well, eight goes into 28 three times. Eight times three is 24. So there's four left over. We're gonna have four eights. Well, if I combine this and this, I'm gonna have, if I add those together, this is gonna equal 39 and a half, or 39 and four eighths, right? So again, I can see that 40 is greater, just by a half, but it's still greater, okay? All right, let's move on to area of fractional sides. Here we're, we're being asked, what is the area of the shaded figure? So let's take a look. And let's see. I love this one because look, I know that this equals one whole, right? Two of those 
equal a whole. There's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Um, we can sit here and figure out that this entire length equals three holes. And we can see that this one is one, two, three and a half. We could say, okay, well, this entire length is three and a half. And we can multiply those together, three times three and a half, and get to our answer that way. All right, let me record that so you can see that. We had three in our rows. We have three and a half in our column. So we can multiply that together. Right? If we do that, we'll have three times three equals nine. And then we'll have this three times one numerator, three times one is three. And then our denominator stays at three, right? So if we do that, we are going to see that we have nine and one more. So we're going to have 10, right? That will work. Absolutely, that will work. Now, sometimes my students have said they like, in this case, when we see that the whole is set to be two of those, we just like to partner them. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh oh, and a half. So when I did it this way, I am noticing. That. Oh, I see what I did. So when I do it this way, I see that I have 10 and 1 half. Now, I love this because look, my answers don't agree. Instead of stopping this and reshooting this, let's learn from this. Where did I make an error up here? Well, I made an error up here because look, I noted in the columns I had half, but I wrote it in three and a third. So I really should have made my denominator two. If I make my denominator a two, then when I get to this moment and I have three halves, I don't just have one whole time, right? Two goes into three one time. Well, that gives me my 10, but I still have one left over. So this is actually 10 and a half. So kind of come over here to the other side of the loops, but I have 10 and a half. Well, now I have two answers that agree. And this was a good moment because mathematicians, we always make mistakes. Everybody does. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of a strong mathematician to stop and persevere with it and find where does it not add up and then correct it. All right. So we were asked to find the area. We did it two ways and now let's explain it. So the area is 10 and a half. We don't have a unit here. So I'm just going to say, units squared, right? Since I can't say centimeters or inches, I'm just going to say uh, units squared. And I'm going to say that we can count 10 holes and we have one half to add. All right, so here I've really described this strategy of circling. I could also describe that area is length times width, which was three times three and a half, which gave me 10 and a half, right? We could explain that as well. One or the other, you need to explain, but indeed we'll all get to this answer of 10 and one half. Okay, let's go to our tape diagram. Write three expressions to represent the diagram below. Well, I'm gonna start with asking myself, what fraction is shown in one tape diagram? Well, we know that the denominator is how many parts my whole is broken into. My whole is broken into five parts. How many of those parts do I have that are shaded? Well, three of them. So this particular tape diagram shows me three fifths. So does this one. So we actually have two times three fifths. There's one way that we could show this. Another way that I could show this is remembering that a fraction is a teeny tiny division problem. So really I have three divided by five, right? Don't those mean the same thing? And yes, then I'm gonna multiply that by two. So there's yet another way that we could show this, okay? Another way that I could show this um, that I haven't seen as much uh, from our students, but certainly this is something good to take a look at. If I consider one of these, one of these is 
one fifth, right? So I could say that one of the shaded areas is a fifth, and in each of my holes, I actually have three of them, right? This still would get me to the idea of three fifths. But it's looking at this particular one is a fifth, and I have three of those in a hole. And how many of those holes do I have? I have two. So again, these are three expressions that all work. I didn't write them on the answer line because I wanted to make them nice and big so that you could write along with me. But there are three expressions that we for sure can record. Let's take a look at these problems down below. I have three times seven and a fourth. Well, remember, this three has to multiply itself by the seven, and it has to multiply itself by the one fourth. That's like the distributive property. So three times seven gives me 21, and three times a fourth gives me three fourths. So this one doesn't really need any simplifying or anything. I'm already at the correct answer for number one. So let's record that. We've got 21 and three fourths. My next problem is going to give me the opportunity to think about how to simplify. So let's go ahead and let's do number two here. Here we have five times three and a fourth. So just like we said, we're going to let the five multiply itself by the three. We're going to let the five multiply itself by the one fourth. So three times five gives me 15. Five fourths is going to be five over four. Now this is a mixed number, that's true, but it's not in the best form because I want my improper fraction to really become part of the whole number, all right? So let's ask ourselves, five fourths, five fourths equals what? Well, four goes into five one time and there's one left over. So I have one and a fourth. So really here, this five fourths is going to be added to the 15. We're going to have 15 plus 1 and a fourth, which is going to equal 16 and 1 fourth. So that is our answer for number two, 16 and 1 fourth.